this video, we'll take a look at how you can work with an open access domain model. In this video, we'll be using a model we created in previous videos that has three entities and two relationships defined. On the back side, we have our database, which is a SQL Server database that we created using the open access domain model. The first step to working with the open access domain model is to create a new project. For this demo, we'll create a new console application. Now we have three steps to perform before we can work with our open access domain model. First we need to add a reference to our library project. Then we need to add a reference to telerc.openaccess and telerc.openaccess.35 extensions. So now that we have our references, the last step is to copy over our application configuration which holds our connection string. So we'll add that to our console application and we'll go ahead and set our console application as the startup project. As you can see, our app.config now contains our connection string. So let's go ahead and open the program.cs file. Before we start writing any queries against the domain model, we need to create a new instance of our open access context. It's best to wrap this in a using statement to make sure the context is properly disposed. Now that we have our context, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can insert new items into the database. We'll start off by adding a new product. First we'll create a new instance of our product, then we'll set the properties of our product object, making sure to set the primary key, give the product a name, and then we'll go ahead and add a new category. Again, make sure to set the primary key for the category and give the category a name. Now we're going to set the product to use our new category. And we'll finish up by adding the product to our open access context and the category to our open access context. And then finally we need to make sure to save the changes to our context. So we've created our product, we've created our category, we've defined our product category relationship, and we've added our product category to our context and saved our context. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this works. So now that our application ran, let's go look at SQL. We'll start off by taking a look at the records in our category table. As you can see, our new category was indeed added to our category table. Now let's look at our products table. And again, you can see our new product was added to our products table. Now let's take a look at another way we could specify the relationship between our product and our category. We'll go ahead and comment out the second line that adds the category object to the context. We can actually create an object hierarchy, passing only the root level object into the open access context, and open access will take care of maintaining that relationship. Now let's go check SQL. As you can see, we have our new category, and we also have our new product, as expected. We can actually reverse how we're creating this relationship. Instead of setting the product's category, we'll actually add the product to the category's products collection. Now to make this work, we actually have to go set the isManaged property on the products collection in the visual designer. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll open the Arlink file, select the products collection, select properties, navigate to the is managed property and set that equal to true. When we do it this way, we'll have to make sure to add both entities to the context. So we'll go ahead and uncomment that line where we add the category to the database context. So now we're ready to execute this code. And once again, we'll go check out what happened in SQL. You can see we now have three categories, and we also have three products.
So let's go ahead and comment out all this code. Now we'll take a look at how we can update an existing entity. The first thing that we need to do is get a product we would like to update. So for this we'll use our context and from that we'll select out the product with an ID of 2. Now that we have our product, we can go ahead and modify the properties of our product. Here we'll set the name equal to new name. And then we need to call save changes on our DB context to persist our updates. Now we can run our application. So we switch over to SQL and refresh our products. You'll see that the product with ID 2 now has a name of new name. Now let's take a look at how we can change the category of the product we're working with. We'll go ahead and select out the very last category in our categories collection, and then we'll set the products category to the category we found. Once again, you can see the current category ID is 2, and when we refresh it, you can see the category ID is now 3. Next, we can see how to work with many-to-many -many associations. So we'll go ahead and comment out everything except for the product retrieval. And now we want to go ahead and create a new order. Now we're going to add the, our new order to our product's order collection. And then we'll go ahead and make sure to add our new order to the database context. Again, we need to go ahead and make sure then we go update the isManaged property on the orders collection in the Visual Designer. So go ahead and open the Arling file, select the orders collection on the products entity, and set isManaged to true. Now we can save and run our application. If we flip over to SQL, you can see that the product is not changed. However, if we open the orders table, you'll see that there is a new order in our orders table. And if we open the order products table, you'll see that there is an entry in there as well for our order product relation. So once again, let's comment all, all this code. And for the last demo, we'll take a look at how you can remove an object from the database. First thing we need to do is get the object that we would like to delete. Again, we'll go ahead and select from our products collection. This time we'll just grab out the last product. And then we'll call the delete method of the database context, passing in our entity. And then we need to call save changes to make sure that all of our changes are persisted back to the database. Now when we run this and flip over to SQL and refresh our products collection, you'll see that the last product is now gone. In this video, we took a look at how you could create, read, update, and delete your persistent entities using the Telerik Open Access Domain Model. Thank you for watching.